This series is about my sixth Ford Ranger. I've owned six of them over the years. And they were all the same. Long box, V6, fleet. The fleet Rangers never had all the bells and whistles. It was just a truck. That was all I wanted. My first Ranger was a 1984. Then I got an 87. Then an 89 then a 93, and finally a 2007. This is an image of my 2007 Ford Ranger one day before it was sold with 194,000 miles. And here it is setting next to the new Ranger, the 2022. It was special ordered as a super cab, six foot one inch box, vinyl floor, cloth seats, mud flaps and the rear seat delete. In 2007, I put a Cargo Master chase rail on my 2007 Ford Ranger. I kept it there for 15 years, and before I was going to get rid of the truck, I started looking to see what they had for chase rails for the new 2022 Ranger that I had on order. Well, I was surprised that a decent chase rail, they wanted over $1,000 and Ford wanted $1,500 for theirs. So I decided to take the Cargo Master chase rail because it was a universal fit and make it fit the 2022. So this is how I did it. I had to start by taking some measurements of the old truck against the new truck. Now the new truck I got the measurements from the one that they ordered for me that wasn't my truck that I had for just overnight. And I discovered that the 2007 Ranger had a 54 inch wide box between the side rails. The 22 was 55 and a half. The height from the rail to the top of the cab on a 2007 was 21 inches and it's only 19 inches on the 22. So going to have to do a little cutting and welding to make it fit. And because the 22 Ranger was going to have a tonneau cover, I could not put the Cargo Master rails on with that tonneau cover as the Cargo Master chase rail. It clamped onto the side of the rails. Well, that's exactly where the tonneau cover rail goes. So I was going to have to put the Cargo Master chase rail and bolt it to the top of the truck bed rail. So I started off by cutting the mounting plates away. As you can see, I've got it started here. Cut that away. And there it is. I've got it completely removed. And there's another image showing that it's cut away. Then, because of the height difference, I was going to have to cut a big section of the Cargo Master side rail away. You can see the line that I've got there. I've got to chop a pretty good section away to get it so that it is the top of it will be level with the top of the truck. Where if you notice the original picture I had of the 2007, it stuck above the top of the truck and I had to put a little air dam to get the air to go over the top of it because it would whistle. So there I have taken my cutoff wheel and I've chopped a section of the side away. And that was what I was left with. So this final picture of the side shows how I put the two back together. You can see just how much I chopped away to make it work. Then, because the 22 is wider than the 2007, I had to purchase some steel tubing that matched the outside diameter of the tubing of the Cargo Master it had to go in the slip tubes of the side rails. So I V'd them and put them in the vise and then welded them up. And when I was done, that's what I had. I extended the sides six inches on each side. Now here on this picture, I've got the new base welded on so that it will bolt on top of the rails of the truck, or so I thought. But when I went to put them on, I realized 
It still wasn't going to work because of the angle of the side pieces. I couldn't get the bolts on. So as you can see, I've got a section marked out of the piece that I had cut away because it was too tall. And I proceeded to cut that away. You can see with my Reorbi reciprocating saw and a hacksaw blade. And then weld it on so that the side rails were going to stick farther out right at the very edge of the bed. It's not the prettiest weld. I never claimed to be a welder, but it won't break. There's the bottom. That's got to be cleaned up, like right there. And then I had to acquire some bolts. Now, the original bolts were steel, and they rusted. So I got truss head stainless steel bolts and stainless nylock nuts and stainless washers. And I had an awful time taking the rails apart because the center rail goes into the slip tube of the side and it is held together with two of those set screws on front and back on each side. Well, they were steel and they rusted solid. I had to heat them up red hot and get them out. So I was going to put back in stainless steel. So there you can see that I've got one side bolted down and you can see the rail for the tonneau cover. You can see the original bolt holes just to the left of where the bolt heads are. That was how I wanted to put it on, but I didn't realize that I had to have such an angle of the side and I couldn't get the bolt in unless I wanted to go bolt from the bottom and put a nut on top and I did not want to do that. So that's why I extended the plate. This is eyeball engineering, guys, at its finest or worst, depending on how you're looking at it. With the sides bolted on, the tube, I kind of centered it and got it roughly where I wanted and then tightened down the Allen set screws. Now, if you notice, the lights are set in. That's because the side rails on the old truck were six inches closer so that they were the full width, but I wasn't going to chop off those brackets that I built and welded on just to spread them out. It's good enough. So there's a side view, and I think it looks pretty good. A lot of people have commented on it as to where I got the rails. Cargo Master no longer makes them. They're not cataloged, even in their history of what they made. It's like they never existed. So now I have to wire it up. So I bought full of trailer wire and the, the plugs. I decided not to use the 15-year-old stuff from the 2007 because I needed to run it in a different manner. And as long as I've got a new truck, I might better just get new wiring. What I did to hook one end on was I soldered the individual wires, shrink tubed them, put a shrink tube over the whole thing, and then put liquid electrical tape over so that it's waterproof. And that's what I had right there. And that is going to plug into the back of the truck. Now you start by plugging it into the trailer connection of the truck. And then I ran it over to the left side and up into the frame of the truck because the frame is, it's a box frame and it's hollow. So I stuffed it in and started working it towards the front. There I've got it by the rear tire and I'm slowly working it towards the front of the truck. And right at about where the bed ends and the cab starts, there is a little inspection hole and out comes the wire. The trailer wire is the four wire that you see and that white wire, that is the reverse lights. The wires come up between the cab and the box and they go to the light connector on the rails. So again, I soldered, not the prettiest, but it isn't gonna come apart. Then I proceeded to shrink tube everything like that. Then I put a bigger piece of shrink tube over it and shrunk that down. 
and then coated the ends with that liquid electrical tape again to make sure that it would be waterproof. And both ends of the connectors had dielectric grease squirted into the holes so that uh, there wouldn't be any corrosion. So now to get that backup light to work, you have to take a ratchet and undo two bolts. There's the top one, and there's the bottom one. You can pull out the whole light assembly and then get out the socket for the bulb and scrape off the green wire, and then you're going to have to solder your white wire to the green wire. Then you coat the whole thing in that liquid electrical tape and let it dry and then put your tail light back together. So with that all done, it was just a matter of seeing what the lights look like, although I'd had them for 15 years, so I pretty much knew what they were going to look like. But that's the running lights. And that is the hazards. And there's left turn signal and right turn signal. And finally, your backup lights or bed lights. And that's how I made myself a thousand dollar chase rail for practically no money, just some hardware and then a little bit of time, actually a lot of bit of time, doing some eyeball engineering and getting it so that it would work.